God's Word. Some years ago, when we were at Tabernacle, living there right by Lowe's Foods, which is not Lowe's Foods anymore, <laughs> it's a big empty building, but we could walk over, if we had an ice cream fit and needed some ice cream or moo bars, I don't guess we ever got any moo bars, but anyway, one Friday night, we, we needed some ice cream, and <laughs> needed some ice cream, and so we walked over there to get some ice cream, and... Um, when we checked out, had my smaller recreation cards, one that had a um, um, picture of me underneath a um, polystrata fossil of a tree trunk in West Virginia. Polystrata being multiple, poly being many. Strata or strata are the rock layers. And it was an actual tree trunk going through multiple rock layers. The, the rock layers going this way, supposed to represent millions of years, and the tree trunk going this way. And it's an enigma to the evolutionary thinking individual because a tree doesn't live for millions of years. <laughs> so I handed the girl that card. Of all of her cards, that's the card I had. And she saw the fossilized tree trunk, and I was ready to say something about the flood. But she looked at me, Brother Parker, and she said, Are you the dinosaur man? <laughs> and I was taken aback, Dad. I didn't know my mind was, yeah, blank, worrying, where did she get that? This card has nothing to do with dinosaurs. But she saw a fossil, and she thought dinosaurs. And so what we had had at the conference probably a few weeks prior to that we had had our friend Matthew Spites come and share about the pterosaurs, this information here, them being alive in um, New Guinea and how he had seen them and things like that. And so about the time it was connecting that somehow through the grapevine, <laughs> she had heard of Matt Spites talking about the pterosaurs and they're thought to be dinosaurs. They're not technically dinosaurs. But before I could say anything, you know how your mind's whirring and you're thinking what to say next, she turned and said, hey, look, guys, the dinosaur man's here. <laughs> and right away, Uncle David, three bag boys came over. Two or three, I think it was three. It was three plus her. Three plus her, so four. And they listened with rapt attention because nobody else was in any other of the grocery lines. A Friday night, it was a God-ordained appointment. And I never will forget them listening. As young, like older teens or perhaps around 20. And you know what? It, it's hit me after the fact that we're not giving them answers. Our churches are not giving answers to our young people. So the question hits me then, why should they continue in church if we're not giving them answers that connect this to what they're learning in whatever science that they're taking? If they're taking evolution in public school, they need to know the truth that millions of years is, is not true. That's a fairy tale. Or even, oh yes, go ahead. The testimony of that very thing, that's not new because... When I was in my teenage years, especially, um, we lived in Northern Virginia. We spent many, many times went to the, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., and I loved to go to the Museum of Natural History. But then I would go to church with my uncle, and one of the problems that I had was how to put together the millions of years fairy tale with what the Bible said and what was being preached in church. And I could not get it together. And and when I went to seminary, 29, well, 33 years old when I went to seminary, I still had that problem, even though I'd been saved four years. And I, I got to the seminary, they still, at Tennessee Temple uh, University in Chattanooga, they didn't even have a creation class of anything to explain to us. They did challenge us to believe the scripture 
instead of believing science. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, it seemed science said one thing yeah. and, and God said another. And in reality, the true science said the exact same thing that God said. Mm. Amen. And, but nobody would teach it. Mm. And it took, it took years, and I was pastoring in Oregon back, and that would have been 87, and someone, in, uh, a man asked me to go to a Back to Genesis seminar with him, and that, that seminar was so eye-opening to see that the very words of the Bible that I had chosen to believe, that all the creation said, yes, that's true. Amen. That's true. Amen. Well, so it's not just young people we need to reach. <laughs> it's the older than young. And so this, in a message that I have called, well, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the gospel of evidences. Apologetics is the word. That is reasons why we believe what we believe. And I can think of no better tool than to use dinosaurs. What did God save, if, if you will, the best for last? As we would do the most impressive, shall we say? You know how it is, Pastor, when you a, a message or something you're forming, you want to leave something that would stick in people's minds at the very end of your message. And so, God using uh, behemoth first, Job 40, 15, and then whole chapter 41 is Leviathan. It breathed fire smoke out of his nostrils. Talk about a fearsome and impressive creature. And we don't know exactly what Leviathan was, but in Psalm 74, I think, it refers to the heads, thou breakest the heads, plural, of Leviathan, singular. And we'll deal with this this summer. The possibility of a multiple-headed creature. Well, there's anomalies, a two-headed turtle... Two-headed snake? Could there be a multiple-headed dragon reptilian creature? Sure, God can do anything. But um, apologetics is not only an outreach to those who know not Christ, but it is also an inreach, as we've seen. Those in assemblies need answers. The pastor in Terre Haute, Indiana, needed an answer, and he got it from a banner. He believed it, but the banner and the text of Scripture on that banner greatly confirmed it for him. So finish up with the Gospel of Evidences. This is not... I just want to mention this. Three points to death, burial, and resurrection is what we always hear. And that's, of course, critical. But it's foundational that Jesus Christ was the Creator. That's not addressed in 1 Corinthians 15. It's addressed in John 1 and Colossians 1. So we've got to take all Scripture, Right? So Christ being the creator, entered into human flesh, he died, was buried, rose again. But note how there's a that that follows it, a that phrase, he was seen. What's that? Evidence. That's what we've been talking about. And if we can't see it ourselves, if I can't go to, you know, the Congo myself, I can go to somebody who's from the Congo and get evidence that way. What do we have in court of law? Eyewitnesses. I think the last time we talked to Cam in, in Statesville, even though the video says he hadn't seen Mokili Mbimbi, I think in Statesville he said he had seen Mokili Mbimbi. So I want to get some clarification before this summer, interviewing him one-on-one -on -one so we have good audio, good video at his home. So pray about that if you would. With our dinosaur theme, we, we certainly want that. And so Peter saw, the twelve apostles saw, above 500 at once saw Jesus living, breathing. And, and, G, and Paul said, of whom the greater part remain unto this day. So what's the implication? You can go ask them what they saw. Uh, James, all the apostles, and Paul referring to himself as one born out of due time. So folks, we see distress in our land, and it's not just a virus. There's a whole lot more. We see distress over our li religious liberties. What were we tonight? In fear of some authority coming in possibly and having some... There's distress in our land. Um, gates burned with fire in, in the time of Nehemiah. 
And he said, come, let's build, that we be no more reproach. You know who we need to start building with and building the truth in? Right here. So in order for us to do it well, we need to learn so that we can help this age and older have confidence in this right here. And that's what apologetics is all about. And the people said, let's rise up. Let's do it. Let's rise up and build. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together this evening. Thank you for no authorities coming in. <laughs> Tell us we can't meet here tonight or something. Thank you for that. Um, we pray concerning the virus issues. We pray that truth would come to light. We pray. Um, it was a blessing to me to mention this animal alleged and to look down at Brother Cam and say, do you know of this animal? And you would say what? Oh, yes. Would you step up here to the microphone and, and let me, um, because we are wanting to share this message with boys and girls, uh, teenagers, like when we, um, after our first conference that we had here at Tabernacle, I was over at Lowe's Foods just getting something, you know, just, I think it was ice cream. <laughs> and I handed the girl a card, one of our little trading cards. It wasn't even about dinosaurs. It was about fossils. And um, she looked at me and she said this, Are you the dinosaur man? And I was taken aback because the card had to do with a fossil, a picture that we saw, a fossil in um, um, West Virginia. And um, so it took me, I was ready to talk about fossil, and she said, are you the dinosaur man? And I, I said, well, uh, I guess. And uh, so come to find out, she had heard Matthew Spites speak at our first conference, or our second conference. I, yeah, he, he spoke some at our first conference, I think. And so that subject matter grasped her attention. And so um, if you can uh, remember something about this. Now, are you familiar with Mbielo, Mbielo, Mbielo? Yes, I'm familiar with uh, Mbielo, Mbielo. Uh, back at home in my youngest day when I was about five, six, you know, going on uh, my gray grandma and uh, great grandpa will take us and um, tell us stories about you know the living animals and the living fishes and uh, just you know story about the jungles um, and um, they will call creature like uh, Mbielu Mbielu uh, they will call creature like um, Ngulu being um, the cousin of uh, the um, animal that we did see in um, in the presentation, and um, they will tell us, you know, someday in your life you might see these creatures, they have stone looking things in their bodies. And if you happen to see it, just don't run away and uh, don't get, get closer to them because they might, they might hurt you. I'm familiar with um, Mokilimbembe. I have not seen it myself, Mokilimbembe, but my real, real great great grandparent had heard it, had seen it in uh, Congo. I'm from uh, Kasai, and uh, Kasai is a small region in Central Africa, actually where the Congolese river uh, comes from. It's a, a junction of many rivers uh, in Africa that makes uh, the Congo rivers. And uh, they, happen, they happen to say that uh, Mokili Mbembe, Mokili meaning the world, because that thing is so big, the thing is the world. That's Mokili in uh, Bengala. So uh, Mokili means what? The world. The world? world? Yeah, Mokili. Wow. And um, they thought that I was, the, you know, the, the world moving. And um, when you, if you're lucky enough, you might see it in the darkness most of the time because it likes to eat during, you know, the night season, uh, night time. And um, 
around the river, like right, long neck, and uh, it's, it moves really quietly, but it makes a lot of noise in the river. And um, there is bird bigger than um, the art that we've seen today that I personally had seen in Africa. I've seen flying snakes. Uh, they would fly from uh, a tree in the jungle to another tree. Uh, I had seen um, big, uh, we call them caiman, meaning the big um, uh, crocodiles. As far as from uh, the screen here, back to where that second table is. And um, there was a, a group of zoologists that came to the Congo to capture this particular uh, crocodile. And they did succeed. They did build up uh, a wooden frame so they would take it back, uh, I think, to the state or England. But overnight, the crocodiles ran away. Ran away. And there is a program on, uh, I think, on National Geography. They had a doc, done some documentary about that particular uh, crocodile. And until today, they never caught it. It's still in the Congo. Now, and is there a Mohamba? Yeah, there is also a Mohamba uh, in the Congo. That I had seen a Mohamba, not, but I had seen a uh, bigger boa. They will actually eat a human being as big as, uh, as me, myself, in the Congo. Wow. Yeah. Now, some of these other creatures, um, like I mentioned, Mohamba, yeah. did they get up to like 50 feet long? Yes. And I think that the one the National Geography had done on TV, I think that was a Mohamba. So the uh, Cayman? Yeah. Is that a, a Mohamba too? Or? I think a Cayman is a Mohamba because I think a Cayman got a longer, a longer, I think. Snout? Snout. Okay. All right. What about an Indendeki, a giant turtle? Have you heard of that? I, yeah, I, I heard about uh, indeki. I had not seen indeki myself because in, the, in the Congo we eat uh, turtle. We do eat turtle in the Congo. And uh, fishmen, when they would come back, they would tell us that they would cut it, but there was no way to bring it back to the villages because it was so, so, so big that they couldn't handle it in those little uh, uh, banana boats. Oh, yeah. I guess it wouldn't fit in that, it would, would it? Fit in the banana boat. What, a, what about, I was intrigued when I heard you talk about Emilentuka. Yeah. Can uh, you describe that for me? <laughs> Emela Ntuka. That's how it's called. Emela Ntuka. Uh, Emela Ntuka, you've seen just a regular elephant. Okay? Now, the elephant got a big mouth, big horn. Emela means you swallow. Komela, I'm swallowing. That's in the Congolese uh, language. Like I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to drink some water. Nakomela, mai. Emela means I'm drinking. Mai is the water. And they would say that this elephant will swallow, um, I would say, big bird like the uh, owl. Or if it stumps and uh, kills a um, rhinoceros, which they do, the elephant will sometimes kill rhinoceros, it will swallow it. It's a big, big, uh, huge elephant. And uh, when they move, they um, move slowly, but anything on their path, they destroy. There is places in the Congolese jungle that no one that I know of until today, no human being ever put food in, because it's so, so thick except those animals, they have ways to get to the swamps in the middle of the, uh, the Congolese uh, jungle. So the, the Emela Ntuka, having one single horn, yeah. has one horn? Just one horn. About how long would you say? Uh, I would say from here till about where the laptop is or the big horn. Would you describe it as like a dinosaur? Um, a dinosaur, you know, based on what I know about dinosaur, is something that's oversized. That's a dinosaur for me. It's my, that's what I would describe. But um, I don't know if that's a dinosaur or is a cousin to the dinosaurs or an elephant. And uh, 
Hippopotam, Hippopotamus, that's what is that in English? Hippopotamus, Hippopotamus. Oh, Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, Hippopotamus, and <laughs> <laughs> I have so many languages, guys. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, hippopotamus, elephant, and um, giraffe, or oh, okapi, the one that you just seen a little while ago, okapi. I would describe them to be in the same area of um, dinosaurs. Try to do both microphones so we can hear. Um, are you familiar with uh, Nguema? Is that how it's pronounced? Nguema is a big old, big, 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 big monkey. You know? And um, I had seen some in the um, jungle of the Congo, in the Kivu area. That's where you, I think there was one, of, I don't know if it was a National Geography, they had future. They had passed away and um, they were scaring it. Yeah, I'm familiar with that particular type of uh, uh, monkey. And uh, at home... So it's a monkey? Yeah. Goma is a monkey? Yeah. Oh, okay. And... Uh, I have it down as a bird. No. Oh, no, that's not a bird. Well, I'll correct that. Uh, at, at home, most of the time, uh, when you go you know, in the um, river to get your fresh water or you get your fish or to do some, um, sometimes we, we, we tend to have a garden close to the rivers because we don't have plenty of water in the villages. Um, they advise ladies not to take younger children because they will come and get those kids and run away with them. In Guama, Will? Guama. Oh. Yeah. Guama, Will. Wow. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you. I'm gonna, that's pretty intriguing, isn't it? Thank you. To hear. And um, I had it down as a monkey eating bird. <laughs> See, that's what you learn when you do these things.